all your audio files were missing? Have you ever sent a project to a friend or coworker and the audio files were missing from that project as well? Well, I'm here to help you today, my friend, because we've all experienced missing files from Ableton projects. And today we're gonna talk about how to make sure that never happens again. What's up, producers? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to Low and Candy. My name is Bohemoth. I'm an engineer, music producer, and today we're going to talk about Ableton Live file management and making sure you collect all and save and how to do so when you're sharing a project. Now, I've been using Ableton for a long time, about eight or nine years, and still sometimes I have problems with audio files going missing. So today we're basically going to talk about how um, the file structure works so you have an idea of what's happening and why it's happening. And then we're gonna go ahead and give you some fixes for that. So we're gonna hop right in. We have our project here and we're gonna go ahead and toss some audio files in. All right, now we're gonna save this project, save live set. I'm gonna save it as low and candy. Now if we exit out of this and we have a project file here, we'll see if we open it. We have two folders. We have our ALS, which this is important. ALS means Ableton Live Set. This is different than your project folder. Basically how it works is when you create a track, a song, Ableton creates a project folder. This is the master folder of, of everything having to do with the project. That's the different versions, that's the samples, that's the settings, that's everything. So your project is your entire folder and your .als is your specific Ableton Live set. Now the reason you'd want numerous ALSs is because, for example, if you're collaborating with someone or working with them, you want to save every version you have typically in case you need to go back and resurrect something or redo or whatever. It's just good practice to <clears throat> constantly save new ALSs. Um, you, I'd usually do something like save them by date or save them by uh, who worked on it last or what was done last and kind of name them like that. It would really save you in the future. Anyway, going back to our project file, we have our .als and we have our Ableton project info. If we click on this, it's empty. That's because we did not collect all and save. If we go back to our project, now we have our kicks here. Um, these were not in the project file and I'll show you right now. If we go up here to file, collect all and save, what this is doing is it's collecting all the data and all the audio clips from your ALS from and storing them in your project file. So traditionally, if you were just go to live and save, you're saving the project, but you're not saving all the data within it in that folder. So for instance, if this was a track that I was going to um, only, if this was a track that I was only gonna work on myself, I don't need to collect all and save because when I open it, Ableton's gonna pull these samples from my sample folder. Now we have four options here. We have save files from elsewhere, files from other projects, uh, from user library, and from factory packs. I leave all of them selected. You don't wanna miss anything. You typically won't have to uh, collect from sample, you typically won't have to collect from factory packs. The reason for this is because typically if you're sharing a project with somebody and they're also working in Ableton, they usually have the factory packs, but I do it just for good measure. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, okay? Side note, like I was saying, if we didn't collect all and save, these, would still, <clears throat> these samples would still come up in our project. The reason is is because Ableton is synced with my personal sample folder. So right now, if this wasn't collected all and saved, the samples would come up in the project, but they would still be living in my samples folder. Since we just collected all and saved, we're gonna go ahead and exit out now. And now in our project file, we have three different folders that weren't there before. We have our project info, we have our ALS set, we have a backup copy that's automatically added when we collect all and save. We have presets, so these are the presets uh, pertaining to Ableton and Max for Live and whatnot. And then we have our samples. So now what we did essentially is we collected the samples from our sample library and now they're living in our project folder. That way, if we come in here and we 
compress this and we send it to someone, now the samples are living in the project folder. It also creates this .asd file. And what a .asd file is all the settings pertaining to this specific audio clip within Ableton. For instance, if we went in there and we warped it, or we uh, transposed it, or pitched it, or messed with the gain, the .asd file saves all those settings. So when we go to open up the project, it has all those sample settings already saved in there. Now the second reason this can happen, let's say you're opening up an old project of yours, hasn't been shared with anybody, it's just been on your computer, maybe it's a couple months old, whatever, you could open it up and your own audio samples are missing. The reason this happens is because uh, typically, and this has happened to me outside of this realm here, but typically the reason why is because you moved either the audio file from where it was, or you moved the project folder from where it was. When you create a project, Ableton builds a file structure that points to where all the audio files are and all the samples are when you open it. So if we went to open our project, it would say, okay, we're going to pull the kick drum from this Ableton samples file, or we're going to pull this from that. Now, if we move the project folder, it changes the directory. So the way to fix this is we're going to go ahead and crack open our project. Huh. Now we see that our audio clips are missing. So the reason this is, is like I was explaining, Anytime you move something out of the designated file structure that it's created, it can't find the audio samples. So when we created our project file, we said all the audio clips are coming from this direction. All the audio clips are coming from this project file. They're coming from this sample folder. When we move the ALS out of the project file, it can no longer locate the sample. So any different combination of this, whether it be moving the project folder, moving the ALS folder, moving the samples can cause this to happen. It's usually a pretty easy fix. We're gonna click this lit up in orange menu down here, which is telling us that media files are missing. And it's gonna give us the option for an automatic search. Mine is set to desktop. The reason this is, is because if I don't know where an audio file is, it's gonna search my entire desktop, anywhere I would keep an audio file, and it'll find it eventually. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And bam, just like that, we got our audio clips back. Now I also wanna give you a brief rundown of a very good organized way to put your folders so you can kinda of keep an eye on this and make sure it doesn't happen again. So you're kind of understanding how this file structure is working and how it's pulling from stuff. On the left here under places, we have our folders. We have the option to add a folder. Now, if it wasn't already up here, I would add samples. That's my sample folder, but it's already right here. So I have my sample folder where all of my samples live. Then I have my Ableton project folder. This is where all my project folders live. And in the project folders, we have our ALS sets, sometimes one, sometimes many. So basically, the best way to do this, in my opinion, is we have our project, and when we need to search for something, it's either gonna be in one of two places. It's gonna be in the samples folder or it's gonna be in the Ableton folder. So the two ways to search is to search them independently or we can search both of them under desktop. So um, one thing to be careful about when you collect all and save is if you do that too much, you're gonna have a lot of different copies of the same sample on your computer. They'll live in different places, but you'll still have numerous copies. So that's something to take into consideration. But thank you guys for watching. I hope this solved your problem if you were dealing with an issue with this. This is actually the first video. I'm going to be doing them every day. All different kinds of stuff, tutorials, uh, plugin reviews, all that kind of stuff. So if there's something that you want to see in particular or somewhere that you're stuck, go ahead and drop it in the comments and I'll actually make that video for you. I'm actually currently offering mentorship one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it was the fastest way that I've ever learned to produce music. Working with a mentor, I've had three or four over the years. It's very beneficial. If that's something you're interested in, the link's in my description. If not, thanks for coming up. Welcome to Logan Candy. Peace.